And how you doing? It's Howie. We're at State Farm Insurance with Kyle Hickam. How you doing, man? Doing good. How are you, Howie? Good. It's wonderful. Uh, State Farm Insurance, big on coverage, small on gum. I mean, that's a weird place to cut the budget. Well, it is, but we provide them a whole bunch of it. What do you do for the people here at State Farm Insurance? Clue me in, man. Well, we're educators. That's what we are. We educate them about their insurance, all lines. Homeowners, auto, life, health, bank financial services, their businesses. I'm going for a world record. I don't know if you can insure it. This one toenail, I'm going to see how long I can grow. So far, it's, it can be used for uh, light hunting and scaling small walls. <laughs> you got any insurance to cover that? No, I'd have to send you to Lloyd's of London for that. <laughs> Where do you see uh, State Farm going here in Joplin? What's the future like? Well, the economy's changing. Obviously, we're seeing that. But State Farm continues to grow. We branched into the financial services. I can bring in a person, talk to them about their retirement accounts, roll over their 401ks, set up a Roth IRA. If they want to uh, to get um, a finance on their house, we can set that up for them. So it's become one-stop shopping. It's not just insurance anymore. It's become a multitude of financial service products as well. Give me a sentence that you you would want everyone to know uh, about Kyle Hickam and your agency. For all of your insurance and financial needs, you can find us in three places. That's at 2606 East 32nd Street, online because we'll meet you on your computer and at your home because I make house calls. Wonderful. We're here at State Farm Insurance. Thank you, Kyle. Appreciate it. And here we are at Skaggs Chiropractic, 1521 East. 20th Street with Dr. Steven Skaggs. So, Doc, tell me, uh, you guys really pride yourself on being up close and personal with your patients, too, don't you? Yes, sir. Chiropractic actually means the practice of the hand in Latin. How long have you been doing this? Been doing this for over 16 years now. What are some of the misconceptions about uh, chiropractic? Well, for one thing, <laughs> chiropractors are all licensed physicians underneath Missouri State law. Doc, your business is unique in that you treat uh, the source of pain and not just the symptom. Explain that to me. Pain is an indication to the brain that something is wrong somewhere in the body. What we do here in my office is we treat the problem. We don't treat the symptoms of the problem. If you don't go to the the source of that pain and take care of the problem, then you're going to continue to have the symptoms. We try to isolate down to the problem and then we try to take care of the problem. Doc, what would you like a patient to know whenever they first walk through the door here at Skaggs Chiropractic? Well, first of all, Howie, not all of our patients are able to walk through the door. If you can't get out of the car, honk, we'll come out and we'll help you out of the car and we'll help you into your room. But the first thing we want you to know is that we're going to provide you with the best care humanly possible in the four state area. Does that uh, uh, a door side service apply to everyone? You gotta have an appointment first. Oh. <laughs> Alright team, as you know we just took a great listing in a fantastic neighborhood and I asked you, my team, to help me. What did we get done to get this home sold? I took photos, shot a virtual tour, had keys made, and put a sign out front. I measured the home and entered all the important information onto the MLS. Then I took the photos that Wade shot and put them on over 25 partner websites. Kelsey, what was your role in this? I posted the home to our Facebook page and created a website the homeowner could look at any time, day or night. Same up. What was your idea? I hired a landscaper to write something on the front lawn with weed killer. Weed killer? Exactly what do you mean by that? I hired a landscaper to write, this house rocks on the front yard with weed killer. Staggering. I can't believe what I just heard. Jayma, did you collaborate with the rest of your team on this particular decision? No, I didn't. Team, did she consult with you? Jayma. I think that was a bad idea. You let me down. You're fired. You can all go now. That was the right call. She left me no choice. What's up? It's Howie. We're back with Anderson Engineering doing some drilling, some digging, and some 
lounging. I've got Jared here. How you doing, man? I'm swell. How are you? I'm swell, too. Tell me about Anderson Engineer. What, what in the world do you guys do? Anderson Engineering was started in 1954, and we've been in Joplin since 1986. Anderson Engineering is a civil engineering, land surveying, and soils engineering firm. Does that have anything to do with this thing back here? Uh, no, they just set that up. I'm not sure who those guys are. <laughs> Explain the lab. Uh, the soil that we'll remove with the drill rig behind us, we'll take that into the lab and we'll do strength tests on it, make recommendations on based on what the soil is on the specific site, what they need to do to it to make it buildable. What's in there? This is a concrete cylinder. Each job has different mixes and different requirements. Should, yeah, should I be a, Oh my. <laughs> you guys knew that was going to happen? Oh really? John, I, I noticed that uh, you, you pay your workers well here. They work so hard. Yeah, they're really turning the augers right now. <laughs> look alive, team, look alive. Tell us about the future of Anderson Engineering and where you see you guys may be going. We're ever expanding our uh, our services capability, but you know we, we try to stick to the basics, pleasing our clients, really listening to what they have to say and what they want. And that really sets you apart. Oh, absolutely. Every one of our project managers, they work directly with the client, they set up the proposal, they meet, everyone takes the initiative, and uh, that's one thing that really does set us apart. Eddie, we're back here. What is this area called here? This is really our main treatment facility. It's kind of like this, the hub of a wheel. All the spokes come off of this one main area. It's like a puppy ER. I keep waiting to see George Clooney walk through. You know, I've been told I look like George Clooney. Really? We have Dr. Grundy. Explain, wh where are we right now? This is our small dog boarding room, actually, where our smaller little canine patients can hang out. They just hang out, sip lattes, and yeah. surf the net. Rough life while they're here. It's like a little <laughs> canine internet cafe. What kind of uh, cat is this? This is an Ebis Sinian cat, actually. Uh, uh, what do you see the majority of here? Cats or dogs or what? Oh, uh, pretty good mix of both. We also see some uh, some pocket pets, which would be like small rodents, hamsters, rats, uh, rabbits, ferrets. What's the weirdest thing you've ever seen? The weirdest thing I've ever seen? A <laughs> uh, squirrel. Right now we're in our training facility uh, that we use for our obedience school. We're running four classes, ten weeks apart. In 2011 we'll be expanding our services and the facility to about a 4,000 square foot training facility where we'll offer um, more advanced classes and uh, more variety of services. Table side etiquette, things like that. Yeah, right. I'm Dr. Lacey Hobbs. Um, I'm a relief veterinarian. And who is this? This is Fender, and he's one of our um, patients. So you guys deal in trauma and just maintenance care, right? We're all around the health facility, you know, everything from their annual exams and vaccinations to dealing with them whenever they have health issues. Caring about the pets is what it's all about. We're back at Choice Marketing with Karen Plot. How you doing, Karen? I'm good. How are, you? how are you? Hey, tell me, uh, how long have you guys has Choice Marketing been around? Uh, we started in 2000, so we are going to be celebrating our 10th anniversary in September of this year. And you've been here at this location three years. When totally remodeled the inside. Wonderful. Started with one employee six years ago, and now we have 13. We have three graphic designers on staff. We have Jason, Terry, Pretty in Pink, and Brianna. What is your background in marketing? I have been in some kind of advertising or marketing since I graduated from high school. Started out in the newspaper business, ended up being a marketing director for Westco Home Furnishings, and um, had an opportunity to start our own agency, and here we are. You guys do video as well. Absolutely. We just opened our video studio. We have a large green screen uh, that is really being utilized a lot. Now tell the truth, you ever just come in here and, and lay it down on a chair like you're flying? <laughs> well, I haven't done that yet. This was really stepping out of the box for you guys. Yeah, it was. Mark Kinsley came to us last fall, and this is what came out of hiring Mark. It's unique to, to the Joplin area, this TV studio uh, here, this recording studio. Uh, where do you see it going? Well, I've, hey, sky's the limit, or maybe the moon. I kind of like the sky. <laughs> you live a dream every day. I do. I really do, Howie. I know that sounds kind of corny, but we do. We love what we do. Corny, you forget who you're talking to. <laughs> that's true. That's Choice Marketing. And that's a wrap.
And we're here with Robin at the Wildcat Glades Conservation and Autobahn Center. I actually got it right. Can you believe that? How are you, Robin? Doing great. Thanks. As soon as a person walks through the door, what do they come in contact with here? When they first walk in, we find that they're they're very inspired by the actual architecture of the building because it is a very unique design and unique landscape that we have here. And then we have some amazing volunteers. So volunteers run the building. Then we have some incredible exhibits. What also makes you unique uh, being out here? Um, it's our environmental education programs. During the week, when you if you came out to visit us, you would likely see school groups here learning about environmental education. And our programs, they learn it hands-on in field-based education programs that we have here. I like how you said it. You don't want to just get them to a classroom, into another classroom. You bring them outside. We have five outdoor learning stations. So they are in Shoal Creek. They are doing testing. They are um, discovering nature hands-on. Our motto here at the center is connect connecting people with nature and once people feel a connection to nature then they are more inclined to then care for it. We are a nonprofit organization so the, how we keep our doors open and our lights on and our staff here is through donations so that folks can come because we do not charge an admission fee to come to the center. We want everyone to be able to have the opportunity to make that connection with nature, come in and learn and enjoy what we have here and appreciate that again with the hopes that then they will make better choices to care for the environment. At the YMCA with Pat Crespino. How are you, Pat? I'm fine. How are you today? Now, from the looks of it, you do everything here. Looks can be deceiving. Oh, is that right? <laughs> How have you seen the Y evolve over however long you've been here? Well, actually I've been here for 34 years, so it's changed drastically. We first merged these organizations in 1985. That time we probably had less than a thousand members. Now we're looking at close to 14,000 members. As downtown gets revitalized, as a healthier city comes about, you, you look to grow? Yes, we do. As you know, we're opening a child care center in Webb City, which is a full service child care center, which was desperately needed in that area. Um, we have our South facility. Most people are, are, may not be aware, but we do have the land purchased behind there. We're working closely with the city, and hopefully we can uh, establish a running walking track in that area. What have you seen uh, uh, the Y be so instrumental in here? Everyone knows that we have workout equipment, and we have aqua size, and we have the classes for your health. I think people don't realize the impact that we have on helping individuals who really need these services and can't afford them. Scholarship dollars and scholarshiping individuals, families, adults, it's a very, very big part of our organization because what we want to do is provide them whatever tools, whatever means they need to stay healthy and active, have their children well cared for, um, interact with people, especially in the senior sector, this kind of thing. It's Howie at the Spiva Center for the Arts with Joe. How you doing, Joe? Just great, thanks. Thanks for letting us in here. I mean, there are a lot of breakables in here. Well, yeah, I mean, but we let anybody in here, you know? That's the point. I'm proof of that. Tell us a little bit about what you've got going on down here at Spiva. We're all about celebrating the arts, and yeah. that means all of them. Spiva has been around for 62 years. We have classes year-round. Right now, uh, Creation Station is going on. It's a Tuesday afternoon after-school program. I think it's ages 6 through 12. We have two galleries downstairs. The main gallery, where we are, is for people with national and international reputations. We have a regional gallery for artists who live within about 100 miles of Joplin. And upstairs, the upstairs gallery is a rental slash teaching facility. Where do you see Spiva going? Spiva is growing very, very rapidly. And I would see in Spiva's future an expanded facility. The mission. The mission of Spiva is wonderful. It is to celebrate the creative experience. Art is all around us. So what it does when people experience art, it taps into your creativity. If you think about where the economy is going, it's going to be a creative economy. People have to know how to think outside the box. They're going to need to invent different ways of making a living. And the arts can do that. The arts can plant that kind of seed and give people that kind of solid foundation. Hey, how you doing? It's Howie. We're back, and I'm about to introduce you to... 
the Alliance of Southwest Missouri. Carrie, what you guys do here, you are a connecting point. Strong families create better communities. What is the Alliance all about? That is what we were about. We're about working with children and families uh, in the areas of health and safety primarily, all things that are designed to really address the needs of our communities. We bring a lot of partners from the community to the table to make decisions and help us decide really to address those issues that will make stronger communities by creating better families. So the Alliance really, you guys really affect more than just families. When you really take a look at the whole picture of what we do, there's very few people in our area that are not touched in some way by what we do. You know, whether it's children at school, whether it is a uh, a fender that needs a job, whether it's uh, people that are dealing with substance abuse, whether it's parents that need parenting skills. We want to make sure the things we are doing are relevant and important in our communities and affect the people in our communities in a real positive, real way. And so we really are, will continue to respond to those issues. We'll continue to evaluate what's happening to make sure that the things that we're working on, the things that we address are real true community issues that need someone behind them. Whenever somebody sees this logo, what would you like them to think? I think families. I mean, families is really the, the key. We want strong families. If we have strong families, then everything else falls into place.